Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about some intense storms with a nasty squall line forming with some 80 mile per hour winds and tornadoes, plus an update on the tropics. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, we've got the overall surface map this morning for August the 11th. And this boundary, that's gonna set the stage for our main player for our severe weather gonna be later on today. You can definitely see it's got some cool air behind you. We're coming in in the middle 50s uh, this morning with a lot of those warmer 70s out ahead of it. That's gonna be that clash in temperatures later on this afternoon into the early evening hours. That's going to set the stage for rounds of severe weather and a nasty squall line that's going to be forming that's going to move across and set the stage for some very high winds and a lot of lightning with these storms as well. As we've got this warm sector building in from uh, the Pacific Northwest, that's going to be moving inland with a lot of dry air behind it. That is actually going to be enhancing the temperatures to almost record levels uh, for the next three days in the Pacific Northwest. So a lot of heat with excessive heat watches coming in for them. That'll actually start today. We've got the monsoon alive and active down here to the south. And then let's get down to the tropics because we've got some action going on down there. But let's take a look at the water vapor imagery. If you see this little green shaded area down here south of Puerto Rico, that is now what they what uh, is uh, labeled as Tropical Storm Fred. It's got some dry air at, at ahead of it, indicative of that yellow shaded area. So it's got a tough road to climb as it continues moving uh, west northwest uh, throughout the next several days. We also have another instability down here into further into the Lesser Antilles. And we also have another area of interest that we're going to be talking about uh, that could be really become active as we go through time. So let's take a look at Fred. Currently, it's a 40 mile per hour tropical storm. It's moving west northwest at 16 miles an hour. You can see it's got a lot of land interaction with it. It's about to go over uh, the Dominican Republic here. It's probably going to be downgraded to a tropical depression because of uh, as it crosses over land. But you can see it's skirting the coastline here that it's going to be impacting you know land for the next several days with some heavier rains just a minimal tropical storm but it's going to be uh expected to be off the coast of south south southern coast of florida here by saturday morning and as it gets into the western gulf you can see the latest guidance from the national hurricane center actually has it increasing in strength and possibly come into a, a strong uh, strong tropical storm by then as it gets towards the panhandle of Florida. We're talking you know late Sunday into Monday. So this is a good ways away, but it's not out of the question. Some guidance actually has it come, becoming a minimal hurricane before it actually makes landfall sometime on uh, Monday morning. But back behind it, we also have another feature which also which is now labeled invest 95l the national hurricane center as of right now gives it a 40 percent chance of developing over the next five days but you can definitely see the latest intensity guidance really has this ramping up like i mentioned before i think fred's going to kind of clear the runway for what could be grace uh later on down the line and a lot of this intensity guidance actually has it going to a hurricane within the next five or six days so this is definitely something we're gonna have to be keeping an eye on uh, as we as Fred becomes inland as well. So there's another player out here that could be uh, uh, have more impacts than what Fred could be, and some of them actually take it up to a major hurricane as well. So this is definitely something uh, to keep an eye on and uh, and look out for as we go through time. Uh, here's uh, the setup for today. So you can definitely see yesterday from the storm reports, these areas have been hit hard the last two days. And yesterday was just the same. A lot of wind reports up to 243 wind reports so far, preliminary reports from the uh, Storm Prediction Center. And a lot of these same areas, and you can definitely see the guidance uh, today has this bullseye with that cool boundary. And basically the, a lot of the same areas that get hit yesterday this uh, this uh, Cape values is what's what's uh, stands for uh, convective available potential energy in the atmosphere is again upwards to over five thousand. So just to 
give you an idea, just a normal thunderstorm, you're talking anywhere from like 500 to 1,000. So it's definitely concerning when you see ranges upwards to 5,000. That is a lot of fuel in the atmosphere with a combination, a lot of heat out of ahead of it, that cool boundary sneaking in, a lot of updrafts and a lot of instability. And yes, that is definitely going to be setting the stage of this bullseye here of some very strong uh, storms going in later on today. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted a pretty big risk for severe weather. This is an enhanced risk. It's fairly large, and this encompasses a good chunk of real estate anywhere from Chicago, Milwaukee, Madison, going into Grand Rapids, all the way down to Aurora. That is going to be your bullseye today. This is definitely one of the, one, the areas that you're going to have to be most concerned about for all three modes. We're talking hot, damaging winds upwards to 80 mile per hour is not out of the question. Uh, tornadoes and large hail is not out of the question with this with this activity. And, uh, it, and, and definitely even in down to Detroit and to Columbus, all the way down to Cleveland, Ohio, even to get into Pittsburgh, uh, could see some of those uh, stronger storms. So let's break down the the risk here's the here's the winds like i mentioned we could be seeing a nasty squall line setting up and this is a big area of a hatched risk this hatch risk means you have a greater prob probability of seeing 65 knots as hurricane force winds or greater in this whole entire area that's just basically talking a 30 percent chance of this entire area could say that's a one in three shot of getting some of those, you know, 70, 80 mile per hour winds uh, later on this afternoon into the overnight hours. So definitely, if you live in this area, have your weather radio handy, secure all loose objects possible now, because we could, could be a bumpy ride as we get into uh, the overnight hours. And tornadoes too. Yeah, we're gonna be dealing with all three modes. So that same area still has a pretty good, pretty good area of a five percent chance of seeing tornado spin ups within that sector along squall lines. It's pretty susceptible. You could see some uh, spin up tornadoes. Is not out of the question. So definitely, this whole area needs to be under the gun and be weather aware anywhere from basically Chicago uh, to almost the entire half of the state of Wisconsin, the almost the entire state of uh, Michigan. And as this will continue uh, moving across the northern portions of uh, Illinois, as well as Ohio, as we get into the overnight hour. So let's break this down as far as maybe timing from these particular systems. Here's 19Z. You're talking this is early afternoon hour. So we could be seeing some strong to severe thunderstorms right in the central part of uh, Michigan here with some very high winds and some some hail along with these storms. And that should could tail off to the tail uh, ends of getting into northern portions of Ohio as well. But you see this other little feature starting to starting to come to play in central parts of Wisconsin. That's going to blow up into a nasty squall line that you're going to have to be dealing with into the evening hours. I stopped it here at 4Z. That's essentially basically about 11 o'clock tonight. This is going to start up here, but it's going to be traversed down uh, south, southeast. And this could be a, a, a long duration event of a nasty squall line setting up for almost the entire state of uh, Michigan here going under the Great Lakes into Chicago, northern parts of Illinois as this continues to moving uh, east southeast in the overnight hours. This band is the band that I'm most concerned about that you could be seeing some of those 70, 80, upwards to almost 90 mile per hour winds is not out of the question. Some isolated spots, tornadoes, and some of those larger hail indicative within this line. You'll probably get the hail before it and then it'll transfer into a, a damaging wind threat as we go into the overnight hours. Uh, here's your uh, wind swath of the latest HRRR model. And definitely, I mean, look at this, guys. I mean, this is just over the next day of where some of the higher wind gusts could fly. Yes, this is right here, central and southern parts of Wisconsin, northern and central parts of Illinois, northern parts of Indiana, Ohio, and pretty much the entire state of Michigan could be under the gun of seeing some of those uh, nasty 70, 80. And then, yeah, some of the guidance has it upward to 97 miles an hour. So that's some dangerous stuff setting up as we get into the overnight hour. So definitely have your weather radios handy 
uh, for this event that's going to be coming up. And as we go into the day uh, tomorrow on a Thursday, that will continue moving east, southeast. These won't be nearly as intense as what you're going to be seeing today, but still some, some definitely stronger storms uh, along that same boundary for Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, New York. And this will get into uh, the I-95 corridor as we get into uh, the evening hours. And then as we go into the day on Friday, that same area will continue moving east, southeast. We'll push a little bit further off into the south. Now we're setting up over portions of Missouri, uh, getting into portions of uh, Tennessee and Kentucky as, as well into West Virginia. That will include the, the Washington, D.C. area, uh, possibly get into Philly by then. So yes, this whole setup will be in your area by the time we get into Friday with some of those nasty storms uh, that they were dealing with today. And as we continue the view and as we go into that Saturday time frame, August the 14th, you can definitely see down to the, down to, uh, the south here, we've got, which will be now, uh, Hurricane Linda down here in the Pacific. You can see it's well away from land, but it's definitely close enough to bring some of that monsoonal flow, at least in the southern parts of uh the 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 monsoon region so yeah southern southern arizona southern new mexico that's going to kind of be your bullseye for the week for seeing some of those flash flooding setups as we go through time with linda setting setting up just offshore here spreading the moisture in and as that boundary will continue to move further south now we're talking areas of oklahoma kansas oklahoma getting into north texas with some welcome rain coming spread spreading not just the rain but the cooler air uh wiping away those heated heat, heat advisories and bringing some of that cooler August air back into the picture as we go into the weekend a little bit further to the south as we watch Fred getting closer to Florida and probably being off uh, the southern tip of Florida by then. And as we go into that Sunday time frame, there's potentially where Fred will be by the time we get into Sunday afternoon. Yes, with that boundary and Fred, that's going to be setting up a, a, a major uh, rain event for pretty much almost all of Florida. And you can definitely see the guidance by then. As I, like I mentioned, the official guidance takes it to a 65 mile per hour hurricane. But yeah, there's not out of the question. Some some model guidance has it go into a minimal hurricane before it makes landfall. So this is the area I do think is going to be probably strengthening as it stays a minimal hurricane until it gets into uh, the Gulf of Mexico. And so once it gets into the Gulf, there's a lot less uh, shear happening in this neck of the woods. And so a little bit more favorable for con favorable conditions. And obviously we won't have much land interaction by then as well. And then this will uh, probably make landfall sometime on Monday as we go into the day which is uh, depicted right here as it makes landfall it'll spread its heavier uh, precipitation into the southeast coast you're talking places like georgia uh, south carolina north carolina you'll start to get impacts from fred with those heavier rains some stronger gusty winds as this moves inland and as it moves inland it'll be downgraded to a tropical uh, low end tropical storm probably depression by then as it continues moving inland but spreading some heavier rain along with it with that boundary and you'll have cooler conditions filtering in back behind it with that uh with that boundary and the white kind of wipe away the severe threat by then as well so if you take a look at some of the the rainfall guidance over the next uh, seven days there's the complements of what will be kevin and linda from the monsoon keeping the higher range you can definitely see down here anywhere from three to five inches is not out of the question and a lot of these areas southern ports of uh, arizona into new mexico there's your bullseye with Fred, so it all depends on the exact track and where this heavier rain will fall. But if you're in this bullseye, yes, easily four to six, if not eight inches of rain at times with flooding rains could be setting up uh, portions of the the Carolinas as well. So that could be a you know transfer into an, a you know flash flooding event with probably flood watches. Uh, by then and this boundary up here with these multiple rounds of storms uh, dumping some heavier rain along the way and of course in the Pacific Northwest where that ridge is there's not much rain to speak of unfortunately so I appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video and definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel 
To catch the latest update, wire protect you before and after the storm.